congratulations on completing the exercise. In this next exercise, we are going to introduce the third and final piece of the puzzle in terms of computer programming. If you master this concept and the two concepts that were introduced in the previous two videos, you have essentially understood the fundamental ideas that underpin the computer programs that we write. Before we get onto this final piece of the puzzle, let's first briefly recap what we learned in the previous two videos. In those two videos, we learned about variables and functions. In particular, we learned that variables are addresses in the computer memory that store the values of quantities in their state. We then learned that functions are then used to change the state of these variables. In the last exercise, we introduced a function that will prove particularly useful in the context of this course on stochastic processes in RISC, namely a function for generating uniform random variables that lie between 0 and 1. Furthermore, in completing this last exercise, you will have seen that when the code shown here is executed, it sets the value of state of the variable a to some number between 0 and 1 as illustrated in the diagram. What we would like to do in this exercise is learn how to generate a Bernoulli random variable rather than a uniform random variable. With that in mind, let's first briefly remind ourselves what a Bernoulli random variable is. A Bernoulli random variable is a discrete random variable that can take one of two values, 0 or 1. The probability mass function for a Bernoulli random variable is shown at the top of this slide. As you can see, the probability that we will get a 1, a success, is p, and the probability that we will get a 0, or a failure, is thus 1 minus p, because the variable cannot take any other value. We will come back to the Bernoulli random variable in a moment, but before we do, let's suppose that we do a brief numerical experiment. Suppose that we write our now familiar code to generate a uniform random variable between 0 and 1. Suppose now, however, that we run the command on the second line more than once, and that we generate multiple random variables. The fact that each of these random variables is between 0 and 1 ensures that all of the variables we generate lie on the number line shown here. Now let's suppose that we divide our interval into a part of length 1 minus p and a part of length p where p is the parameter of a Bernoulli random variable. If we are generating uniform random variables correctly, the fraction of points that will lie in this first section of the line will be equal to 1 minus p. The fraction of the points that lie in the second portion of the line, meanwhile, will be equal to p. We can use the realisation that we have obtained by performing this numerical experiment to write our program to generate Bernoulli random variables. The way this code works will be as follows. We will start by generating a uniform random variable between 0 and 1 in the usual way. If the value u we generate is within this segment of the line, we will set our Bernoulli random variable b equal to 0. If, by contrast, u is within this segment of the line, we will set b equal to 1. The way that we write this code in Python is shown in the bottom left of the slide. The first line here sets p, the parameter of our Bernoulli random variable. The second line generates our uniform random variable. In the third line, we then use an if else statement to set the value of b. In particular, we say that if u is less than 1 minus p, i.e. if u is within the left segment of the range shown above, b should be set equal to 0. If, however, u is greater than 1 minus p, i.e. if u is within the right line segment of the range above, b is set equal to 1. Hopefully this is relatively clear. The exercises that will follow will you allow you to check whether or not you have understood this as idea, as you will essentially be tasked with writing the code below using the block-based language. Before we get on to that, though, let's first briefly summarise what we have covered in the three videos thus far. These videos have introduced the three key ideas that underpin most of our computer programmes. These three ideas are that variables store values in their state, that functions change the state of variables, and that logic makes the behaviour of the programme dependent on the state of the variables. 
Let's see how you now do in applying these ideas in the exercise. Good luck.